NGN's presentation of the U.S. Open Ultimate Championships brought to you by Elemental Technologies, perfecting the media experience with multi-screen delivery solutions for the modern world, and Patagonia, team sales and discounts for athletes seeking exceptional quality and peak performance. Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Ultimates coverage of the 2014 U.S. Open here at the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. I'm Megan Multeni and I'm here with Kevin Minderhout bringing you what is sure to be an exciting semifinals round matchup between Brute Squad out of Boston and Traffic out of Vancouver, British Columbia, an international uh, matchup here in the last game of the day for the women's division. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at some of the players to watch as we move throughout this game. We're starting looking here at traffic. They're going to be in gray uniforms on your screen. Some really exciting players from their squad. We've got Catherine Hue out there. She's number 90. She's represented Canada at the World Games in Columbia last year, 2013. She's going to be anchoring this traffic handler line. She's got powerful throws, a lot of firepower, very dynamic thrower, uh, and traffic really does best when they rally around her. We've also got Crystal Koo. She's number 66. Also international experience with the U23 Canadian Worlds team, and she is just a speedster for this traffic team. Very powerful force downfield for them, and has some pretty fun uh, over-the-top throws that she breaks out from time to time as well. And Brute Squad's not without their international contingent as well. Leading that way is Cami Groom, number one. Fast player, deep cutter, versatile. Just an all-around rock star. Look for her to catch a lot of goals. Behind the disc a lot this week is Chena Titcomb of Five Ultimate Family. Just a really fantastic handler, doing a lot for Brute Squad to get the disc moving, helping them with upwind scores, earning herself a spot on the Patagonia play of the game last match for her assistance of the upwind break. And that was the, the turning point in that game that brought Brute Squad here into this semifinals match. Looking now to take on this Canadian team who they had trouble with earlier in the tournament, but looking to come back with a vengeance in this semifinals matchup. So for the line for Brute Squad, they're going to be pulling. Uh, we have a little bit of a windy day down here uh, at the field. The wind is blowing as you look at your screen from right to left, a little bit blustery. Um, and out here for Boston's D-line, we've got Lean Hoffman, Cammy Groom, as mentioned, some speedy, dynamic, new additions to this bro uh, Boston roster. Emily Bacher with the pull, Shira Klain. Uh, we have Claudia Tajima, uh, Chelsea Garcia, or Witty Garcia, and finally Becca Ludford to round out this Boston D-line. And the pull is up. Way to receive. The Brutes locking down with a man defense. Downfield looking for Kawabata. She's able to hold on to it. Back to Hue. Excuse me, that was Ku with the disc. Now with Hue. Nice patience demonstrated here by Vancouver's handlers. Looking off the cutters, keeping the disc moving. Now finding number five, Ashley Davison. And looking, oh, looking for Kawabata on that deep look. A nice throw, good pressure by Becca Ludford, unable to bring in the disc. And Boston will get a chance to break downwind. Great pressure for Ludford. She was coming off of the dead side. One thing that traffic didn't get going, there was a lot of flow in their downfield offense. A couple of times they were stalled two, three seconds down there without anybody cutting kind of looking at each other, wondering, what are we doing here? And Boston now had to dig it out there by uh, Witty Garcia, but finding Hoffman now trapped on this sideline. Looks like there's a pit call on the play. This play will stop. I think it was over uh, on Cammy Groom. Her defender was giving her a lot of body. She was making a swim move left, right, and she tried to come back around, and there was a lot of contact as she was looking to go deep. Well, this is sure to be a physical game here. Both these teams, a lot on the line, a lot to prove early in the season. Hoffman putting one up for Woody Garcia, looking for Klain and a big bid there. Coming up with the D, that's Katie Barazon giving traffic at the disc back. Set up here in a spread offense. 
Tajima poaching off the handlers a little bit, giving Hue room to work. And good movement here from Traffic's cutters, looking confident with the disc despite the wind. Still running into some problems downfield. This one was a legitimate pick down there. You see three cutters all clogged in the middle. They're gonna need to spread that out, find some isolation. Here, here it is. There's that firepower we were talking about from Ku Kawabata making the deep cut. And it's an upwind score. Traffic will take their O point. Despite a little bit of sloppiness early, they grit that one out. Deep look there, that's from Ku. And this is just broken coverage by Chelsea White Garcia. They're forcing Flick. She doesn't get around. She she was playing really far out in the dead side. Doesn't get a good read on it when it comes over. Just allows Kawabata to get a really easy backhand into the goal. So we're going to talk about the elemental keys to the game now. What do these teams need to do to pull out a win here and claim a berth in finals? Traffic needing to connect on the deep game. That is when they were most dangerous earlier in this tournament. We see it right away in that first point, uh, kind of well on their way to, to making that connection. And also clogging downfield spacing. I think what we're going to see here from their D-line is a poachy look, clogging up the lanes. They were very dangerous when they were able to put people in those holes. For Brute Squad, we're going to need to see that offensive patience that they've been able to demonstrate at times throughout this tournament in the wind, putting a lot of faith in their you know, big time throwers like Chena Tidcom, Emily Bacher, Claudia Tajima, just not forcing deep looks and just keeping the disc moving. They're also going to have to t contain traffic in transition. They're most deadly when they get a turn and look to strike right away, having to be really heads up when they have to, their O-line has to turn around and play D. So Titcom receiving out to Seville. We see a little bit of those sagging looks to start. But Seville able to find Laura Bitterman. Back to Tajima. Back to Bitterman. Tight angle, but finding Beck Becky Malinowski who opens things up. And that Huck looking like it was gonna stay in bounds for just a second and then tailing out the wind having some fun with it. And one of the things to note about that first score is it's an upwind break really early on here. We're already seeing a little, a little bit more than we saw in our, our last game early this morning at nine o'clock, a little bit less wind, able to, able to actually work the disc in that left to right direction into the wind. Wind's coming right to left on your screen. And it can be so, it can be so tricky when the wind isn't consistent. You can have two, three passes, they connect, things feel like they're grooving and you take that fourth shot and things pick up and it just sails out of bounds. Yeah, that last disc looked like it was coming right down into the hands of the traffic defender. The wind picked it up, thought we were, it was gonna come back in over the top to somebody picking up the garbage and then did an abrupt about face and went out of bounds. So definitely unpredictable out there on the field of what the disc gonna do. So Boston looking back on the attack, little a break there from Tajima to Bitterman. They've had some nice connections already at this point. And great space on that throw from Malinowski out to number 16, Kristen Unfried. Back in the hands of Seville. Malinowski coming back into the handler set. And a big layout D on that reset to Tajima. That's number 26. Uh, goodness not on our roster. <laughs> it looked like traffic was gone with a bit of a, a, sh a shade to the middle with a flick force there. Really wanting to stop down a deep game, slow brute squad down, make them take lots of passes. And that's where our player to watch, Tina Titcom, is gonna come in and take control of the ball, uh, direct the offense, make sure that they're getting the looks they want. Right now, able to find at least a few Boston cutters, but tr pressure there too much for Brutes. Chelsea Murphy and Crystal Koo to pick up the disc. Nice little breakthrough into space to start things off. Oh, and just off the hand, a little pressure on the back from Tajima, fouls called, no contest. This was back with traffic. And looking for the floater. Oh, and that was Chena Titcom looking to get that D. 
there was a lot of contact on the play. And that's a phenomenal grab if Michelle Ning was able to come down with that. You know, that is a really hard throw to make work. And they do so off of the observer ruling that that contact from Tina Titcomb resulted in the drop of the disc there. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the discussion was because if she had dropped it, the foul would have brought it back out to the, the end zone. I think it was just, it was a matter of whether this was an in ruling or not. Oh, we get a better look at it from this side. Never lost the disc in her hand the whole time. Great, great awareness to keep that under control. And I think that was uh, one of our great observers out there, Stephen Hubbard, uh, helping sort out the discussion. Along with Stephen Hubbard, Jacob Nuxel, Sheila Quintos, Glenn Ford all out there doing some good work. We've been seeing two observers on the field, but as we move into these elimination semifinals rounds, we're going to have four observers, four sets of eyes on the field at all times that will hopefully give them the angles they need to make the right call if players decide to go to them in a case of need. You were talking about that flick throw being very difficult in this win because the tendency of the win is going to be to push it down. It was really, it takes a lot of skill to be able to hold it up in the win like we see an isolation play here looking for Woody Garcia, a tall target going downfield, but traffic coming out with sitting three under and one deep, which allows them to contain that. Boston still maintaining possession, and now Bacher looking again for Garcia. Oh, just a little too long. Really great look at a deep cutter here. Take that one all day. And Woody Garcia is just one of the tall receivers uh, that Boston has to work with downfield. And that is something that could become a problem and we've seen as a, a has been a problem for traffic at this tournament. They're not a very tall team. Uh, their tallest players are Ashley Davison and Ali Short. And Ali Short is not in attendance this weekend. So 5'9", their tallest defender, really having to deal with kind of the height of other teams and putting a lot of weight on her shoulders to make that happen. This is Davison right here going with the big lefty backhand huck and finding Catherine Way on the other side of the disc for a change of pace, bringing in that traffic goal. That is an upwind break for them. Just a phenomenal throw from Davison. And I, I think the downfield cutters were a little bit confused. There was some question over here in the area whether that disc was up or down and people were looking, wondering whether play was gonna stop. Nobody on field made a call, it was just the sidelines making a call. So those downfield defenders got a little bit caught up. Looks like Brute Squad's taking a much needed timeout, gonna talk it over, we're gonna take a break, we'll be back, you, back with you in about 60 seconds to see if Brute Squad can stop the bleeding, get on the board with a couple points. Welcome back to Next Gen's coverage of the 2014 US Open. Here in Blaine, Minnesota, we're at a women's semifinal between Vancouver Traffic and Boston Brute Squad. Right now, we see Vancouver up three points to zero on Boston, now having to work it upwind, yet to get one on the board. It's a very strong start, good energy here from Vancouver. But a nice connection here from Cammie Groom, finds Lean Hoffman with room to run. Looks off Malinowski deep. Swings it to Bacher. Opens things up to Malinowski. Wind feeling quiet right now. Throws looking crisp. Yeah, and it, it really important to be able to take advantage when this wind dies down and be able to put beautiful throws like that one up to Chena Tickholm. We talked about her as seeing someone to watch behind the disc, but this time Lean Hoffman coming back into that handler set and Lean Hoffman not a bad throw herself. She can do it all and putting it out for Chena Titcomb. Lovely throw to space. And Titcomb 
almost looks like she's going to attack it at an earlier point, but realizes she can beat her defender and catch it in the end zone rather than having to catch it outside and throw another pass for the goal. And the disc was just floating beautifully. A, a function of that calmer wind, just enough to get under it, pick it up, and allow her to run on for the goal. So Boston now on the board, trailing Vancouver traffic, one to three. But now heading in what is sometimes a downwind direction, uh, looking to contain some of Vancouver's quick, speedy cutters. We've seen some great pressure previously in this tournament, uh, defensive pressure able to be applied by this brute squad uh, D-line. We've got a lot of speed in Lean Hoffman, Cami Groom out there. Uh, not to mention Claudia Tajima, nice big mark. She's a, always someone who's uh, hard to throw around. Yeah, we haven't seen, they have the potential to put on really great defense, but we haven't seen a lot of really solid lockdown defense forcing this traffic team to, to work it around backfield, take some resets. Traffic's been getting a lot of open looks downfield for yardage gainers. Oh, Davison was looking for that huck look again from Kawabata, holsters it. And it's back, nice grab there by Catherine Huey. So the disc was behind her and she just reached back for the snag. Oh, and that was a nice throw there out to Eva Cham, but just in and out of her hands. Boston, a chance here to break back. Oh, Kawabata pulling off, looking for that poach D. Shira Klain making a nice diving grab to keep the disc alive for Boston. And a foul on the mark as Witty Garcia pump fakes that downfield strike. Finding Tajima up the line. And we see Groom just with that incredible speed We've talked about Vancouver having some speedsters. Catherine Huey certainly won herself, but Cami Groom just has kind of an extra gear that she can crank into and just finding some extra yards, making it a nice, easy, open side throw for Tajima there. And she was fortunate enough to, to curl around the body of Huey. Huey was trying to block her with her hips. Cami Groom came in, got her left shoulder around Huey. Huey was never able to turn, recover, made for a nice, open, easy goal. So Boston gets one back here, bringing them within one early on in this game. Yeah, they needed, that's their first break. I believe Boston started on defense, so they're at three breaks. We have a two break differential. They're gonna need to get another one going in the upwind direction. They were fortunate that that one they got, there was a, a quick lull in the wind, so it was effectively neither an upwind or a downwind. It was a, a very a neutral. <laughs> And the wind may continue to, to, to low like that and, and players really having to take advantage because you never know when it's going to come back with a vengeance. Yeah, I like that. It adds a little bit more entertainment than if we just have a super strong wind that's really disrupting throws. A little bit more strategy. You can't just take the mindset that, hey, we're going to huck this disc down to the, the downwind side of the field and force this other team to work it up into the wind because what if the wind breaks and you've just given them a nice easy chance to get it? to get the disc into the goal you're defending. So Chena Titcomb peeling off there on that mark just to force it back in the middle is here, sagging that lane, letting the Vancouver have the resets but not having the downfield looks that we've talked about Brute needing to contain. And this time the deep look will sail out of bounds. Yeah, interesting defensive look to decide to take away completely the backhand side but leaving the forehand open I think that's because of the difficulty of throwing that forehand throw we saw that that one earlier the brute squad had overthrew into the back of the end zone that's because that long throw with touch is going to be really difficult if you're looking to throw to somebody deep long you're going to want to wait long wait a little bit more than you're used to before you hit, attempt to hit your target and this is just incredible defensive pressure here from uh, Vancouver, they're in a man, but it almost looked like a zone. Everyone was so close to the disc. Brutes cutters crowding the ball a little bit, but now Chitty Titcomb able to find a release valve out to space. Brute squad moving the disc well laterally out to Sherry Klain, looking for Kiso, kind of unmarked right now. 
Chelsea Murphy with the disc. Oh, and Tidcomb has to dive to keep it up and just in and out of her hands. And Vancouver taking their time here with the disc. And they've now, as we see that Handler, who was poached, it rather than just waiting to receive the disc on the flick side, goes deep out of the set. That was Ning, nice veteran move, not able to hit her, but now effectively unmarked, able to come back into the Handler set. Kawabata. Vancouver still working the disc, now finding some dump motion, but not able to continue that lateral movement across the field. And just too far. Really got to look at that first time before that defense has time to set up, before that mark has shifted over. Well, that's the throw that the squad has been pressuring. They're looking, they want traffic to break around up into that wind and hope for that disc to pop up and then they're gonna go clean it up. They're, they're shading pretty far back and around to force a pop-up backhand, and then they're they're dropping off into the lane to stop an inside around flick. Brute with a turn of their own there on an attempted swing. Kawabata was, was had the D. Ning with the disc. This time completing that backhand around. Ku, back to Ku. Little give go action there from that traffic speedster. As we mentioned, able to just flip it out to Ning, burn her defender up line. And sometimes that's what you have to do when you're a player who this team is gonna rally around is just take matters into your own hand with this short field and make sure that you punch in this downwind O point. And that was Ludford on the mark on the upline defense. I thought she was actually gonna get there and had enough to shut it down. So really credit to the thrower to be able to squeeze it in to a tough spot with a tough wind. And the mark doing a nice job recognizing that uh, Hue had dished the disc off and was going right away. She didn't get caught dead on her heels, so it wasn't a wide open look. Took a really concise, patient throw to get the score. So worth here mentioning that traffic has come this far into the semifinals without some of their key players, including two of their captains. Candace Chan, who is here but not playing. Uh, she is coming off of a cartilage surgery that's kept her out of this US Open. Uh, hoping to have her back in time for Worlds in Lecco in just a few weeks, as well as Captain Kira Fru, who is also an incredibly dynamic thrower, and her leadership has surely been missed, but credit to this traffic team for pulling together and, and you know, making it to semifinals without their leadership here. And doing it all from the number seven position. That's Titcomb looking deep there for Greenwald. Kind of a high stall count situation, but. Mia Greenwald doing a good job to recognize that and making the cut to give Bruce Squad a chance to make that completion just out of reach. And that's a situation, again, I think any of those flick throws that are going over about 30 yards, you're gonna really have to wait an extra beat before you put it off into the air because it's not gonna float or hang at all. Davison with a swing, digging it out for traffic. Porter. Great, great mark by Titcomb. Finding Churchland. Excuse me, that's Whitehead. Churchland getting a lot of room though there from Titcomb. Able to find Davison. Brute Squad's defenders really kind of giving a lot of room when, the, when traffic's on that break side, hoping that the wind is gonna help prevent them from those throws from going off. And right now, traffic doing a good job of finding those open people. Davison with the disc and a high stall count. That lefty flick up to space, and she had a cutter there in uh, in number 16. Also, we do not have a number 16 on our roster. <laughs> yeah, had a cutter there. Unable to bring it in. Malinowski was just trailing around on the mark. If the deep receiver there to been able to catch that in, she would have felt really bad for a opening up that last minute bailout because she was following the disc rather than holding the force. And that was Tajima looking for Bitterman, although through a little bit of traffic, it almost looked like 
traffic def two traffic defenders got a hand on it, and Bitterman will make a call on the play. Yeah, from this angle, it looked like there was a lot more contact, but you check the replay, and there wasn't a whole lot going on. See if we can't. Yeah, I. It's hard to s hard to say what she thinks uh, exactly happened there. Maybe getting tripped up and the ankles kind of before that, before the disc gets there. Yeah, I saw something as it was happening, but I didn't see anything there on the replay. Observers didn't see anything either say, hey, let's get this game going. So traffic with the disc going upwind. There was a pick there, but the disc will stay. Chena Titcomb will catch up on the mark. Malinowski on Davison. Still giving her that cushion, but un this time unable to find her on that break side. Looking for Whitehead, nice little break. And Traffic right now is running that set very well. It's con it's not too hard of a break. It's a little more of a straight up the gut throw, but then the, throw the cutter immediately looking to swing it to that next Traffic cutter who's getting left open on the break side. This time Davison's throw too far. Titcomb will look to find Malinowski, who's wanted to go deep for Greenwald. Davison, nice mark there to contain. Malinowski finds Greenwald this time on an under, but overthrown there for Angie Zhu. And disc back to traffic. Nice job by traffic to shut down three cutters. They're taking a timeout, going to shut down their offense for a moment, talk it over. We're going to take a quick break as well, be back with you for the rest of the first half of the this semifinal game at the 2014 U.S. Open. Welcome back to Next Gen's coverage of the 2014 U.S. Open. We're here in the second women's semifinal. We've got Vancouver traffic on offense, headed upwind in gray against Boston's Brute Squad, who now with that turn will take over possession of the disc. It's Claudia Tajima to pick up in the middle of the field. Finding Malinowski and Tajima streaking up line. But good work on the mark there by Davison. Finds Mia Greenwald. To Zoo. Back to Malinowski. Oh, and a big IO flick. And that will work out. Thought the intended receiver was Laura Bitterman and that the disc was far too high and over her head. But Kristen Unfried was back there. Lots of room. Toes it in. For a second, I thought this was going to be a terrible miscue by Boston. But the disc sits down just in time. They will continue to trail by one to Vancouver traffic. Yeah, Boston fortunate enough get a, getting a run going here, 3-1 after going down, 3-0 to traffic. Traffic getting, starting this game out with three breaks. That The second one for the Brute squad. And consistency has been something that both teams have had to deal with at this tournament. There was you know, kind of a lot of parity throughout uh, the women's division uh, with losses kind of all across the board. Um, and so really what we've been seeing so far today is the teams that can find that consistency, that can limit their unforced errors, that can be find kind of patience when they're working their offense are the teams that have come out on top. And that's led them both here to the semifinal. And so far, you know, first three points, traffic really look like they're bringing, bringing both energy and focus. Brute looking a little bit, a little bit shaken, but seem to be finding a rhythm and they've got a pretty stellar D-line out here uh, looking to keep that rolling into this next point. The roller pull by Tajima will bring it in for Vancouver on the sideline. Crystal Koo to pick up. Emily Bacher on the mark. L little break to start things there to Kawabata. Now to Mason. Back to Mason on the doorstep. Oh, and Witty Garcia, those those arms are long, and she comes up with a big point block there for Brute. Nice shutdown D here by Traffic and Cami Groom, despite elevating for the disc in and out of her hands, 
And that's a tough one because Cammy's cutting straight at the thrower. There's really no margin for error. She doesn't get a chance to read what's going to happen to it before she goes up for the catch. Call bottom with the disc for traffic. Oh, and an IO there again. That same throw. We think it's going to be too high. We think it's going to get deed or go out the back. But traffic, two cutters back there to reel in the disc. No brute defenders anywhere nearby. Yeah, the, the lucky back left to the, f the corner of the field. If you're going to do something that you're not sure about, make sure it's in that corner. Because everybody's been coming out with it. That point started off with Bacher and a really relaxed mark, allowing traffic to get a break there. They had a lot of flow without without that pressure. You you talked a few points ago that Brute Squad has the ability to put pressure defense on there, but that starting mark is just a to me it's a a matter of focus. You pull the roller, they're on the flick sideline. You're marking flick and you come out with something a little flat that allows them to get the disc with an immediate swing off to the middle of the field with really no hesitation, no work at all from the offense. So that gives them confidence, it gets them going. Not to put the, the pressure only on Bacher because the dump handler was also not focused in playing shutdown defense, even despite the time to get down there. Let's see how traffic does getting set up on defense here. So Bacher to pick up for Brute's O-line. And a huck look here, high stall count. Not the best executed deep look we've seen from Bacher today. Was that 10 seconds? It was a fast 10 seconds yeah. if it was, but it didn't it look more like a bailout than it an actually trying to connect? I didn't see anybody there, and I know Bacher's a great player, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it had to be a bailout, but it seemed awfully fast, maybe a fast count. Vancouver now with this. Oh, and looking for Koo, but a D there. That's number 17, Angela Zhu, another one of Boston's seven player rookie line additions to this team this year. And finding Courtney Kisau for the assist. And another one to this left hand corner. There's the drop. Or actually, that was it was a, a straight up D. I thought. Initially, it was a she was reaching, came through, and, and didn't catch it, but it was just great defense. But Brute Squad finishing the back left corner, clearly a good time to, to clamp down on the backhand, get the disc away from that corner. Everybody seems to be scoring over there. You know, we'll see if Boston can apply, you know, that focus and that and that intensity on the mark. Uh, in this next defensive position, you, you have to th imagine that when you have a thrower like Crystal Koo or Catherine Huey running to pick up the disc, that the first thing they're going to look to do is to break you. They don't want to be on that sideline. They don't want to be there. You want to keep them there. You have to know that the first thing that's going to happen is you have to take away that most dangerous look and then come around, you know, and, and be a little more, more, more honest. But starting so, so flat like that, like you said, allow them to just break out of it very quickly. So seeing if Boston can make the adjustment here on this next defensive point and make those break throws just a lot harder here for traffic's throwers. Killer pulled by Tickcomb, getting it almost the full 70 here with the wind. We'd only seen a couple go in a half field before. Kawabata with the disc in the middle for traffic. Swinging the disc out to Ning. Good pressure, D there by Hoffman to shut down Handler Reset. Back to Kawabata, and she has Davison, and she will take the look. Davison had steps on Tajima, but like you said, that forehand huck, difficult to complete and in she, these conditions. She had a lot of float on it, too. I was really impressed. I thought that, I thought it was going to work out. Davison was down there. I thought she was, Tajima was ahead of her, but Davidson kept with it. The disc floated and she had a chance. So we saw a traffic set up in there. Junk look that we had talked about, forcing Tajima to look to go over the top. Kawabata with the D and through the diving, it looks like it's Becca Ludford there in the attempted D in the end zone. Finds a little backhand. I take it back though. Sheer Klain with the effort for Brood Squad. 
And Shara Klein sporting the American headband, a number of Brute Squad players out there. I, I think getting a little bit of relief for the patriotic weekend that we're here. Normally required to have matching accessories, but. Well, no one can say USAU are not Patriots. <laughs> Got it. Got to bring out the uh, fireworks. So there remains a two point game here. Vancouver executing one of those key plays of the game, as we said, using that junk look to clog some spaces downfield, forcing Boston to take shots, and then capitalizing quickly before Brute Squad even realizes that they have to play D. Yeah. Much easier when you have the short field to work with. Absolutely. So that's Barazon for the pull for traffic. Paula Seville to pick up here for Boston. She was injured in the uh, in the last game, actually a re-injury of a of an ankle, bad ankle sprain that she incurred during brute tryouts. This time Bacher has Malinowski in space, and that is a much better execution of that throw, this time for Bacher. Malinowski, nice big target downfield. Catherine Huey with good positioning, but Malinowski's got a lot of height, a lot of strength in the air. And Bacher with enough touch on this to put it into that inside shoulder for Malinowski. Yeah, love this look, love the throw. Gets it inside out, allowing the float, and picking a tall target. A lot to be said for who you throw to as well as what you throw. Seville, it's interesting that you bring that up because I was thinking, yeah, we haven't heard a lot from Paula Seville, recent Callahan winner. Last last game that we saw her, she was getting lots of touches, but that was really the first time that she stood out to me. She's, you know, she's a very reliable player. She anchored her uh, University of Michigan team uh, in the in the college series was a player for Nemesis last year in a very strong run that they had uh, at the national championships, and you know it's a shame that she hasn't been able she hasn't been able to practice with the team yet. You know she's been her ankle's been wrapped up. She's been limping around. This is really her first time kind of out on the field with them. Um, you know, but she is such a consistent, reliable player. We haven't seen just despite the uh, the you know the fewer touches, we haven't seen many mistakes out of her. Uh, certainly fitting in well with this Boston roster. Traffic here with a short field, Start picking up at about halfway is Shell Ning, finding Kawabata, looking for Davison. Kawabata's tried to find this look before, and this one, she found enough float on it, didn't go out of bounds. Great execution there from traffic. Nice, efficient O point. Davison, like we said, their tallest target comes up big there for the Vancouver squad. Yeah, not much to say other than we've got to put a little bit more pressure on the downfield. You know, we've seen them go for that look multiple times in the past and each of those times it's been the wind that's caused it to not be a completion, not not the defensive pressure. Uh, you know, and sooner or later as you go, players will figure that out. They'll miss throw, they'll miss throw, but they'll say, okay, next time I know what it's gonna look like. And so, you know, maybe a little wake up call for Brute's D-line that they're gonna have to actually work to get the D's and not rely on the wind to give, uh, give them those forced turns. Yeah, it's interesting, a lot of the scores we, we've seen similar back-to-back -back of this same play. That was a brute squad flick huck, traffic flick huck. Before that, we'd seen a couple breaks to this back left corner. To start the game out, people were scoring in that front right corner. Well, make it, knowing that it is hard to score in that front right corner, teams have tried to find the adjustment. Got brute squad here now. Emily Bacher has Woody Garcia in isolation, but Vancouver in this junk look, leaving Malinowski completely open on the far side. Now finds Woody Garcia under. And now traffic is transitioned into man, finding Bacher on the turn, excuse me, on the dump. 
great pressure there on that reset. Oh, and despite the defender, Shira Klein able to come down with it. Oh, it's a little too far for Malinowski. I really thought that Ava Cham had that D, but it looks like she almost ran by Klein as Klein comes up with it. No mark, a nice look, a little too far. Traffic now spreading the field. They have one cutter in isolation. We see Boston pulling some of their own poach looks. We saw Malinowski looking for that under, unable to close the space, and now she is far behind her own assignment. Churchhead now with the disc, finding the swing around. Oh, and just a not enough float on that. That was Ellie Hand. She had a cutter in space. And now we see Bacher. Love this move from Bacher. She sees, oh, just off the hands of Witty Garcia. We see Bacher not walk up to the cone. She sees that this junk look is set. Witty Garcia downfield with tons of room, just picks up the disc. The defender's expecting her to walk it and just jack it. I love that, and it takes two to, to pull that play off, right? The person picking up the disc, and somebody has to be aware that their defender's not paying attention, and that the person who's going to pick the disc up has the awareness to take a look first before starting her walk towards the front of the end zone. Malinowski now to Bitterman. Bitterman right back. Finding Klain. And that time, Witty Garcia able to hang on to it, falling down into the end zone. That's Klain with the assist. That one's successful because Barazan wasn't looking at the disc. All she had to do was peek over her left shoulder, would have gotten the break. And both teams right now looking satisfied with the trade but that's not going to be enough for, for Brute Squad. They're going to have to come out here, lock down on defense. They're going into the second half starting on D. So the next score for Boston, they'll get the disc again on offense. So now you really what you want to do is you want to be able to go into halftime scoring so you don't give them the sort of extra break that comes with the decision early on to start. Absolutely. You know, and, and you mentioned that all traffic has to do there is kind of turn their shoulder. You know, when we have we have these uh, player lines established on these fields at these kinds of events, player just players have to stand farther back from the field. It's windy down there. It's hard to hear your teammates. It can be, you know, no matter whether you're running up and down the sidelines screaming your head off or not, it can be really hard to communicate. Um, and, you know, we see that there just there are times when you're not able to really, for the sidelines to not be able to impact the game, and we might be seeing some of that here. That's a great point. Break throw here to Kawabata to start things off for traffic. And again, looking with that floaty huck, she's got tons of room on it out that back corner. Boston now with the disc and traffic in their junk set. Tajima looking again for that same throw, unable to find Ledford. Looks like we have a stall call. It's not gonna be much of a difference. You're either on the cone in the front right or you're back about 10 yards over towards the middle. Well, we'll take the opportunity to apologize to Rachel Moens, who is number 42. We've been calling her as Rena Kawabata this entire time. So we take it back and we'll correct the error. Now, nice little easy flow play for Vancouver. And that, that is a, s a score by Kawabata. Number 21. So that starts off with that little inside break there. Nice little throw from Michelle Ning. Boston defenders trailing. Traffic takes Hap up 8-6 on Boston's Brute Squad. We'll be back after this halftime break, bringing you more coverage live 
from the 2014 U.S. Open here at the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. Welcome back from halftime. This is Next Gen Ultimate's coverage of the 2014 U.S. Open Women's Division semifinal between Vancouver Traffic in gray and Boston's Brute Squad in white. We're going to talk about... Uh, about Vancouver a little bit here for a second. We Over halftime, we realized that some of their players are wearing other team members' jerseys, uh, so we just wanted to correct that if you're following at home in your program or at home. Uh, number 26 is going to be rookie Ellie Hand. Emma Madden Krasnick is number 13, and that's Lindsay Earl in the number 16 jersey. Give us a chance to talk about the fact. Uh, so we see <laughs> Emma Madden Krasnick is wearing the number 13. That's Mira Donaldson's number. She's not here this weekend. She is a big time contributor to this Vancouver squad. She's tall, she's fast, she led UBC's Thunderbirds all the way uh, up to quarterfinals this year uh, of the college national championships. Uh, and she is sorely missed at this tournament, but will be back at a later point in the season for traffic. Uh, and you can expect her to make a big impact both at Worlds and Leco uh, and later on in the season. So Emily Bacher here for Boston picking up middle of the field. Having to throw a high backhand out to Witty Garcia. Back to Bacher. Looks off Malinowski. Now looking for Tajima. Has to go out wide to Malinowski. Coming back into that handler set as we've seen her do before. Now Tajima up line. And Malinowski knows that that's on her. We've got Koo here picking up the disc. Ooh, thought that was going to be down, but a little bit of lift on the disc at the end. Oh, and a poach D there from Emily Bacher comes into that handler set. And Titcomb looking too quickly for Bitterman. Koo able to get the D. It's back to Rachel Moens. Ku now at the disc. Oh, and in and out of the hands of the traffic cutter there. And Tajima had Malinowski. It instead will float with Bacher making a play to come down with it. Nice, strong, aggressive attack there of the disc. Bacher doing it all so far at this point. The poach D saving the possession here for Brute Squad. They need some contributions elsewhere, though. Nice outlet find there in Witty Garcia. And Brute Squad's cutters here looking a little bit tentative. We see a lot of cut starting, cut stopping. I'm cutting you off. I'm going to stop. Not a lot of decisiveness. Some hesitation downfield causing the uh, the handlers to have to work really hard to keep this disc in uh, in Brute Squad's, hand, Brute Squad's hands. Definitely some confusion. I heard Mike Lawler at halftime telling his team, keep your head up. We're all trying to find the solution to the problem, which is exactly what we're seeing. A lot of confusion out there on the field. A lot of people doing different things. They got to get together as a whole, a unit working towards one progressive goal. And it can be so tempting when your team is down in a game that you must win to continue. You're used to being a big time player. You feel like you have to do it all. And we've seen twice now from Malinowski, neither of these throws working out. She's working hard to get open. But maybe at this point, you know, you say, maybe I need to work hard to get the disc, get the disc back in the hands of someone else and let them make that throw. Tajima poached off here, clogging the lanes almost causes a, a turn, but Vancouver able to maintain possession. Swing back to Koo. She has a cutter deep. That's Terry Whitehead making the cut. Oh, and it dies just short of her diving hands. Back to Malinowski for Boston. Very little movement downfield for Boston. Which might be exactly what they need, just a moment to solve it, talk with each other, decide what kind of rhythm they're going to get into rather than a spastic everybody here and there. Let's take it, let's slow it down, get the handlers in control of the situation, 
and then sort out the downfield stuff. Well, a turn on that swing from Bacher will give traffic the disc back. It's Koo holding the disc in the middle of the field. Nice swing out to Moen. That IO, she's been liking that throw all day, but Bacher reading it, getting another D for Boston. And Boston Cutter's just standing in that throwing lane. Now Malinowski able to find some separation. And goes with the backhand. Much better execution this time. Finds Witty Garcia, tons of room. And Laura Bitterman, <laughs> a little too close for comfort. But able to get the upwinder for Boston's brood squad here. So we will go back and we see Malinowski just rip a full cross field backhand. It's Witty Garcia and you, all she has to do is put it in at chest height. <laughs> just sits and sits and sits. Whitehead makes a good play at it, but Bitterman gets two hands on it. Brute score. You know, I like, I like that confidence that we see there from Malinowski. She's had two forehand turnovers into the wind. She, after each one of them, she's got her hands, you know, pointing to herself, knowing it's her, a little bit of head down, and says, you know what, I can throw that backhand. Fakes the forehand, great put out to space. You don't want to get too bent out of shape when the game is windy. It's not like traffic is having perfect possessions every time. So sometimes, you know, Lawler was talking about the problem Sometimes the problem is just that the conditions are su are such that the game is a little bit sloppy and you have to you have to be above that mental threshold that says you f that I'm, I personally am bad rather than recognizing what's out there and and staying with it rather than falling apart. So that score will put brute squad back on the D. They're coming out with a junky look here, a little 2-3-2. Two, two. And now they're transitioning mostly into man. Take it back there. They are staying in it, forcing traffic to throw. Number of throws here. And a little miscue, a little too far there for number 23, Julia Davu. Bacher finding groom. Wide open to Sarah Jacoby. Back to groom. To Kisau. About five yards out. Back to Bacher. Lefty backhand back to groom. And despite the little bump, from the traffic defender, Courtney Kiesau staying strong, hauling in this break here for Boston Brute Squad, bringing us to 8-8, all tied up in this semifinals match. And Bacher opening it up with that lefty backhand, catching the defense off guard. Certainly, the defenders in the back of that stack in the end zone were, were too far off their person. Thinking that, I believe it was Cammie Groom was shut down. But Groom really wanted that time. She was calling for it since they got into the, the red zone, saying, hey, give it to me. I'm going to take care of this. And she does exactly that with the help of Bacher. Two of their stars stepping up, getting things done. And so no traffic will have to respond with a downwind score of their own. Yeah, not a good start to the second half by uh, traffic giving up two points. Of course, the first one they were on defense, but they did have opportunities and, and the squad had to go up wind. So time for them to settle down and get back into rhythm because another one by Boston and all of a sudden the momentum is just going to be flooding away from them in the exact wrong direction. And 
Titcombe with a great pull up wind puts traffic with a lot of field left to go. And we see again this kind of poachy look from Boston. Got the tall Witty Garcia back there anchoring it deep. Traffic able to work it. Their cutter is coming under to the disc. Rachel Moen's in the middle. Out to Mason. And now Brute will pick up into man. Back to Koo. Nice grinding here by Vancouver's cutters. Ku wanted it up line. Denied there by Titcomb. And with Witty Garcia on the mark, unable to find that reset, although there was contact and the disc will come in at stall one. And good job by Titcomb there, making that a small, small window to throw into. Not any touch on the disc, just sails into the ground. And now we see traffic set up their own junk look. We've seen this before, Tajim on the front cone. Junk look downfield. Titcom not taking any hesitation. Oh! W collision on the play. That was a great throw by Titcom. And unfortunately, poor awareness by Moens as she bowls over. Oh, that's Christy Kim making that play for Bruce Squad. Now you see, so what we had seen previously in previous points was Claudia Tajima picking up on that cone, trying to get over the top with forehand blade, being unsuccessful every time, and instead find a little reset to Tickhome and with momentum before that mark can get around, zero hesitation, hit that backhand. Kim makes a good read on the disc to come back to it, and unfortunately, as Moens is moving forward to make the D, just gets rocked with some contact. So we have Courtney Kiso in as the substitute, and she will pick up the disc to maintain possession for Boston. And it looks like Boston has a 3-1, 3-2 advantage here if they can get the disc moving around and find the right receivers. Which they, they waited a beat too long to put that up, but it's still gonna work because Witty Garcia is back there and she is tall. You know, and we said this at the beginning, the height mismatches were going to be a problem for traffic. Only got one player here, you know, over five, five eight, and and you just, you know, we have those matchups. You have uh, Witty Garcia coming in at 5'10", plus those arms, plus she can jump. Yeah, and, and, and Brute Squad getting lucky there, taking the lead for the first time, 9-8. I think lucky because they had the they had the advantage personnel wise and they had I was it Groom? Well Groom was back here. And Kiso. And Kiso and somebody else was streaking deep, but they chose Groom and Kiso decided to dump it back and forth a couple of times. Despite what really one of them should have pulled out in the middle, found the wide open lane, then they could have jacked it with no coverage on Witty Garcia, but Hey, she's tall, she can come down with it anyway. Works out for Brute, and like you said, taking the lead for the first time in this game, and momentum really seeming to have shifted uh, in the opening plays of the second half. You know, Boston looking kind of rattled, not, not as smooth as they have been uh, in this first half, and now coming out with a lot of focus, making some big plays, looking to get another break, this time headed in the downwind direction. And starting out, the second half exactly like the first half started out, except in the opposite uh, configuration. Brute Squad getting three in a row instead of traffic. And that just does not go where the thrower uh, intends it, but good read there on the play uh, by number 26, Ellie Hand. And ooh, Bacher almost with a third D to her name. Koo putting it up. And <laughs> through the crowd that is Ashley Davison who comes up with it for traffic. We're gonna have to get another look at that. We were kind of obscured by the by the crowd of people if it was a second attempt. It was indeed, it got tipped, lays out, clap catch.
great awareness there by that veteran member of the traffic squad. Yeah, and always a good idea if a disc is popped up in the air and you're not immediately in the vicinity and running at it, to stay about 10, five, 10 yards back from the pack and make sure you pick it up after everybody else whiffs it. We, we saw that throughout this weekend. I, there was a, uh, I remember that play, especially with Danny Clark coming down with one in the Ironside Revolver game, I believe, just uh, thinking there's gonna be that, that classic George Stubbs sky in the pack move and instead donks off everyone's hands. Danny Clark, easy snag. It's a great play there. It doesn't it doesn't land you on the highlight reel, <laughs> but it certainly helps your team out. Much better to be tied up than go for the glory. And that was a much needed play there from Ashley Davidson, one of the very veteran members of this traffic squad. Cause she could have gone up. She was one of the she's the tallest player for traffic. Who's here this today? Weekend. Yeah. So certainly would have been within her her instinct to say I can go up and, and sky this pack but doing the smart thing the team focused so Boston now to work it up wind to Jima with the disc see the junk look again from Vancouver but just kind of a missed assignment on that switch will give tons of room to Malinowski and that was that was just a defensive miscue from traffic they didn't stay in the set started following a player, opened it up in the middle of the field. I don't think anybody ever got guarded in that play. There was communication, but it didn't result in any kind of matchups that were helpful and so we or any matchups at yeah, all. Yeah, you know, we, like we said at the beginning of the game, for traffic to be successful in this game and when they've been most successful is to really stop up those gaps uh, effectively. And we just see one of the defenders pull back. That's Woody Garcia, I believe, just so open in the middle. And now so much room for Titcomb. No one near Malinowski because that deep in that junk set had been pulled under thinking that a switch was happening. Well, I yeah, I think it was intentionally just supposed to be a, an initial play stopper and people were supposed to mark up so there was two two downfield downfield defenders that had picked up and Malinowski realized that they they had marked they were going to man and the person that was just under her had already given up on released her to go forward and pick up a handler so she said hey it's open I'm running great work there by Brute traffic now having to work up win bears on with the disc finding Eva Cham. Eva Cham, the most senior member of this traffic squad at 40 years old. Impressive to see her out there making a lot of contributions to this traffic O-line. There the disc will sail out of bounds and Emily Beecher to pick up for Boston. Looking for Cami Groom to Lean Hoffman and we have seen that combination all day long, both Cammie Groom and Lean Hoffman. A bitch has just been fantastic today. Several points I, I, to start off this half, really anchoring the team and now doing it again. Not afraid to put up that flick. She's had a couple, couple miss, but a lot of dime balls right into the hands of her receiver. And, and it looks like we have a traffic timeout. Definitely the right thing to do down two points, really got to turn it around, get something going. They've only scored one this half. We're going to take a quick break ourselves and be back with you for the conclusion of the second half here at the 2014 U.S. Open. Coming out of that timeout, this is Next Gen Ultimate's coverage of the 2014 U.S. Open Women's Division semifinal. Boston Brood Squad taking on Vancouver traffic. We want to talk a, a little bit about Emily Bacher, a player who's been making a lot of big plays for this Brew Squad team. We thought she was going to come on and be playing on this D-line, uh, kind of filling uh, in the shoes forward. for Amber Sinecrope, who's moved over to the Ghost and the Co-Ed division, uh, and instead having to play offense here in absence of players like Leela Tanell and Dory Zipperstein, who normally anchor this O-line, but she has been phenomenal today and has catapulted Boston ahead up two points, 11 to nine, traffic now with the disc, looking to respond out of this timeout. It's Moens looking deep. 
And that will be too far for number 33, Laura Mason. And I don't know if you could hear it on your the broadcast or if it was during the timeout, but there was a horn. I was just told that is not the horn for a soft cap. This game is still under cap. The cap is going to come on. We still have 15 minutes until the or 15 minutes until the cap comes on. So Brute Squad kind of deep in their own territory now. And Tajima was looking for Groom who wasn't cutting, just trying to thread that needle, thought the defender had pulled off of her enough. But Catherine Hue with a layout bid. Great block for Vancouver to give them the disc back. And traffic's field position right now brings to mind the fact that Brute Squad has not been turning the disc over in areas that give traffic a short field during their run. That turnover here by traffic trying to punch it into that end zone will allow them to set up this three-person junk look. Claudia Tajima with the huck to space will hang, and Rachel Mowens gets a hand on it. Looks like she gets a little cleat in the ankle as well, but hanging in there for the remainder of this possession. Michelle Ning to pick up now for traffic. You see Hoffman had poached off there a little bit to take away that look from Kawabata. And now zero hesitation once again. Chena Tipcomb, this time not a receiver on the other end of it. Well, I think she was looking at Groom and thinking that they had made the connection that Groom was going to go for it. And she never, she, she never looked up again to see whether to just double check before she went with it. But it did kind of look like they had a moment of communication. But Groom just wasn't on the same page. Moen's now at the disc for traffic. Mason bobbles but hangs on to it. And now Nang goes long. There was a pick on the play, so she's going to need to catch this to keep disc in possession. And it looks like there'll be some discussion on the play about whether or not that play was affected and the disc will come back. I think that was uh, Jacoby calling the pick, but well, it looks like no, it looks like it was the Tajima. Replay, then there shouldn't be an issue here. Looks like the. I think the question is about continuation. So if the uh, if the uh, pick happens before it get before Ning releases that huck, will it come back to Ning with just one throw continuation? And it, that is what they are ruling. So great effort there by Kawabata to <laughs> haul in that goal. Fortunately, all it will do is keep possession for her squad, and Ning will retain the disc. Just coming in on one to come on the mark. Good pressure there from Tajima, but Ava Cham comes down with it. And now Mason, the cross field backhand. Oh, Jacoby gets the D this time. Double coverage there by Brute Squad. Excellent play by Jacoby. A difficult one to make because the disc is sailing over her head. And she almost has she she has to almost get it by intuition rather than getting the chance to have a good read, understanding where the thrower was, where her receiver is, and and finding that spot instantly and going without hesitation. And this little nice play there by Tajima to maintain possession for Brute as they've moved the disc laterally back to Titcomb. Back to Tajima. High stall count. They're able to find Titcomb. And she throws through the mark. D by Mason, but there will be a foul on the throw. D 
the Brute Squad cutters get finding themselves a little bit mixed up and stagnant on that possession. They've got Groom though out here in isolation. If they can take advantage of that, well, good things are probably going to happen. Got Catherine Hue on that matchup, so I think it will certainly <laughs> be interesting to see what uh, what Cami Groom can do here. Titcomb with it as we know she can put it deep. And instead we find the disc out on this sideline, hands of Sarah Jacoby, who just got that excellent Boston D, but puts the disc into the ground looking for Hoffman. Back to Kawabata. Nice stick there by Moens. Swinging for traffic. Oh, in and out of the hands of Huey. Just hits her right in the hands. She didn't look ready for it. Still another isolation play for Groom. Gonna take a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Be back with you in a moment here at the 2014 Thank you. Welcome back after that timeout. This is NextGen's coverage of the 2014 US Open Women's Division semifinal. We've got Boston's Brute Squad leading this game 11 to nine against Vancouver traffic. Right now, Boston in white with the disc, looking to extend their lead. Unable to find cutters off of that play. Now finding Hoffman. And Groom has gone for it, but Hoffman holsters. That's just too deep to, to get that one. We haven't seen anybody successfully throw a flick 30 or 40 yards, and that's where she's starting that cut. And over here on the near side, you see Negus talking to... Can't tell from this angle. Not sure who she's talking to, but she hasn't, she's kind of clogging up the middle lane because she hasn't moved from from this sideline throughout this whole possession. She's standing over here and her defender is just stepping out into the lane and, and locking down options for the other cutters. They need to get a little bit more rotation going and less up and down the field. And so despite that call and that contact, Traffic, the, the Boston turnover will stand and traffic will pick up the disc. And Shira Klain with a big block. Foul on the play though. Kawabata thinks she had to come through her to make that block. Looked like a excellent play from here. And you can see the disbelief in Shira Klain's face as she sits up from that she knows she got that block and the observers will uphold. Chena Titcomb to pick up the disc for Boston, trying to throw through that mark yet again. Found no contest, disc will be in on one. So you can see on the near side of your screen, number 33, Laura Mason is just standing in that lane, making it difficult for them to get anything going. And they choose to have to throw something way out into space, kind of between two yeah, Boston al Cutters. Altered because Mason is there. If Mason's not there and respecting her assignment of Negus, they're going to they're gonna have a lot more room to throw that disc, and the chance of a turnover are greatly mitigated. Well, they'll get, they'll get another shot at it with that Vancouver turnover. Tickcomb in the middle of the field finds Negus. Hoffman now. Tajima. Looking for Jacoby in and out of her hands. And that one would have really stung to put Brute Squad up by three late in the game. Brute Squad scores that up winder. Now your traffic, you're down three. You have to go up win to get back on track. And they have not done 
a whole lot of anything this second half. Only scoring one point to the five by Boston. The huck look now from Moen to Kawabata will sail long. Boston with another shot at it. Yeah, how do you go about finding hope right now when you've been outscored five to one, you're not getting anything going. You even got a, a break there when Brute Squad doesn't get it and your first throw is a turnover. You just keep plugging away and, and trying to take advantage of these gifts when they're put into your hand. Gift like this one through Lean Hoffman's hands. Little lefty backhand there, reeled in by Kawabata. Back to Chan. Now Ning. Ooh. And that pressure there by Hoffman forces her to put it to that outside shoulder too far. Can't groom running to the disc, but not able to find anyone downfield immediately. And now looking for Hoffman. Throw is short, but defender not looking. Hoffman able to come down with it. Clayne back to Hoffman. Oh, and Jacoby again the intended target. And traffic, they're still fighting. We've still seen some great defensive plays by them. You know, they might be tired, they might be feeling a little bit mentally defeated, but on the field, they're still showing a lot of good intensity and a lot of good fire fighting through these points when, when they haven't gotten the O and they've had to get the disc back. And <laughs> that is what Lean Hoffman can do. We saw her cause that last traffic turnover and she comes up here with a Callahan Upwind for Boston Brood Squad. Layout grab. And so many players there just go for the block. And making that catch, yeah, big I'll time, big time <laughs> play. Why be greedy most of the time? If you have it, take it in, but the, the first thing to do is get the disc away from the receiver and, and take it out of play so that your team can pick it up. Lean with a fantastic layout and making the catch is just icing on the cake there. All you have to do if you don't get it is throw a one yarder. Brute Squad now 6 1 in the second half. The writing on the wall is not positive for traffic. And I really love. Kami Groom on that possession. When they got the turnover, her aggression and how that plays uh, and you know in influences her teammates. She's the only like traffic. That I don't see a single person on traffic taking control. Kami Groom comes up there, take control, takes control, and that's exactly what's happening in the game, and it's reflecting on the rest of her teammates. They feel the confidence the groom has and it radiates and everybody gets better. Well, Boston looking to close out this game in definitive fashion, but traffic not done yet. Catherine Huey, excuse me, Crystal Koo with the disc. Now Porter. Oh, and right into the defender, Chelsea Murphy. And Koo just seeming a little bit tired, didn't really finish that cut. Bacher now. Over the top of Malinowski. But still great confidence. Malinowski cutting like this game is over. Feeling the energy, feeling feeling the three points left to the finals. Whitehead out to space. Oh, and Witty Garcia, two hands on that attempted backhand huck look there. Another Boston D. And now cutting with confidence off the, the turn. Helenaski busting deep. Oh, and a rare mistake from Emily Bacher. Gives traffic a short field. Not that she didn't make the effort on that second attempt. Katie Barazon looking for that inside break. Ashley Davison, one throw. Traffic not done yet.
Traffic gets the score, but Brutzgrad in the lead and they have done it convincingly. One of those was the Callahan by Bitterman. Lean Hoffman. Lean Hoffman. Our Patagonia play of the game. We're gonna see that again. Just if you didn't get enough of it the first time. There it is, looking off that reset. Oh, just lays out, reels it in. Upwind break for Boston. They've now got three to go to close out this game and secure a berth in the finals where the last we heard Riot was had a convincing lead on the San Francisco San, Fran uh, San Francisco Fury team uh, who had a rough start to the weekend, able to make it to semis, but it looks like we will not be seeing them in the finals of this U.S. Open. Yeah, as much as Fury was not having an off weekend, Riot was having a fantastic weekend. They have bested everybody they've played so far. The only team going into semis complete or who remain completely unbeaten. I believe uh, throughout the tournament, men's, women's, or mixed. There's a chance that Dragon Thrust may be unbeaten at this point in time. They're in the mixed division. I, I believe they were beat by wild card into semis. That's what we, oh. I was able to hear from the stadium. They made it to the finals. I win. <laughs> Got to have a little faith in the hometown team. They were also playing dominant. I was surprised when I thought I heard wild card beat Dragon Thrust. Well, back which, uh, which was <laughs> equally surprising as they did not beat Dragon Thrust. Well, back in this game, Brute Squad maintaining possession, claimed a Tajima, and a pick downfield. Looks like Malinowski is making the call for Brute Squad to go vertical here, kind of settle things down, make sure that they put this one in. Yeah, they're going to want to get into some formation right now. They've got the five-person arc. Oh, and the Chelsea Murphy had started that cut. Malinowski looked down. It was there. Looked up and threw it, and <laughs> Murphy had cut back to the middle. Yeah, Malinowski, she thought about it the first time, and I hesitated and realized that it was so open she should have thrown it. It did just that. Well, traffic with their own will respond with their own turnover. And Boston with another chance to Jima to pick up on the far sideline. Malinowski finding Chelsea Murphy slicing across. Now to Greenwald, Bitterman in space. <laughs> and Bitterman goes up, realizes the disc is over her head, stays on her feet, comes down. Great play there from Laura Bitterman. She's got a lot of wheels. Height is not her thing, but able to make it work. Well, and the win given the uh, assist as it pops up rather than coming down. Bitterman goes up then comes down, then finds the disc. Brute Squad up three, this game to 15. Again, the second half has been all about Brute Squad, and I think also all about confidence. I completely agree. You know, they have at moments in the wind looked very shaky. I think we saw them drop a game to showdown yesterday looking uncharacteristically just kind of just rattled by the by the windy situation um, you know and so a big kind of a a big kind of feather in their hat to be able to come out of that loss to a team uh, you know who is not one of the stronger teams at this particular tournament uh, and say you know what we can do better than that we just have to find the confidence to hit those throws and looking like a much different team today in the semifinals than we've seen them at other points out here this weekend. So Boston with a 
junk look here. Ooh, Cammy Groom almost gets that D. Coming in to pressure the throw as it has popped up. Mason now with the disc. It looks like Brute is trying to find the transition to man. It's a little slow in coming, but they've made it work. Ku now with the disc. Back to Mason. Back to Ku. She has Mason again. Too far, can't run it down, and Witty Garcia back there anyways to push that disc down into the ground. And Brute looking for yet another break in what has been a half of almost all breaks for them. Overflowing with breaks. That last possession that Traffic had, they had really good timing with their cutters, getting only one at a time out on the live side. Good looks. Just finished off with the thrower error. Nice break here from Ku, Tue, Kawabata. Oh, <laughs> thought that IO was gonna work, but Bacher makes up the ground, layout bid, and now with the disc in her hands. We'll hammer over the top to Witty Garcia. Finding Groom. Now looking to boost it. Becca Ludford hangs onto the disc, and Brute is one point away from making the finals here at the 2014 US Open. And the body language from traffic right now is not good. It's kind of an understatement, <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, a lot of a lot of players bent over after that point, just feeling. I think the fatigue of a long weekend. Oh, and also the fatigue of a loss, as the hard cap was in place, and Brute Squad wins this game, 14-10, advancing to the finals. Same score as uh, as the other semifinal. Uh, actually, I take that back. That is misinformation. But you know, there's a lot of hype about this Brute Squad team coming into this tournament. A lot of news about the new roster additions. You know, they're this team that is hungry to break out of the kind of poor quarterfinals appearances uh, that they've had the past few years and really showing off some, some metal and some grit in this game. We didn't think after the first few points of this game that it was gonna be the Brute Squad show, but at the end, it really was. So we are gonna wrap things up here. Thank you for watching. This has been Next Gen Ultimate's coverage of the 2014 US Open. I'm Megan Multeni here with Kevin Minderhout. We're signing off.